says. Now, this is embedded in an ELS skip sequence right here. And the skip sequence is two, every other letter, every second letter. And it says, rapture. Now, is that a pretty good clue what this is revealing? I don't know about you, but that, that, that pretty much uh, convinces me that this is actually the Solomon concept revealing the truth of what will happen in the rapture. Because you have a man that lived 120 years. Of course, he wasn't 120 years old here, but that's how long he lived. He led the people up to meet with God. And that's important to understand because uh, that coincides with what the Apostle Paul said. Now, there was a fellow called me and said, uh, Brother Caps, he said, uh, I have a fellow staying with me. Uh, and he said, he's worked with the Bible computer code uh, for nine years. And uh, some of you have probably read the, the uh, Bible code, the book, the Bible code. Um, now, you have to be careful with that because if you go... Two or three thousand or forty thousand skip sequence, you could have it say anything. But when you find it in ELS skip sequence in short distances in a chapter where it is seemingly referring to an event that could possibly be, and it spells it out in the original Hebrew in a uh, skip dick, uh, ELS skip sequence then you have, you have some real messages that God's hidden in the Word of God. So I said, uh, check this chapter and see if you can find anything about uh, heaven and, and the church and, and what have you. So here's, here's, here's what he found in an ELS skip sequence. He says, uh, Michael, see, Michael, head of the rapture, uh, charge of the rapture of the church, Michael, he took church into heaven. Now, is that, is that a confirmation of what seems to be said here or, or what? This is embedded in the Hebrew. Michael, he took church into heaven. Now, this is 3,000 years ago, over 3,000 years ago. God has embedded this message in the original Hebrew so that when we read this, the generation that's going to be caught up reads this, we will know what it means. Other generations didn't have this. You remember Paul taught, he said uh, uh, the Lord had given him revelation of other generations didn't understand, but is now being revealed through the apostles and prophets. Well, this is what God's doing to this generation. Why? Because we are the generation that's going to be caught up. So, I don't know whether you believe it or not, but I believe it. It, it seems to be a real confirmation to me of, of what is being said here. It is absolutely, beyond a shadow of a doubt, laying out the prophetic profile of events of the past, what I call through the Solomon concept, that reveals the rapture of the church. And it says it's the third day in the morning. Now that could be, that could be interesting too because of this. Because you see, uh, uh, the Hebrew day does not begin in the morning. It begins in the evening. So if, if that has play with this, then it would indicate that there would be a time period from the beginning of the third day till the morning, because the third day, uh, uh, Hebrew day, begins in the evening. So could that be a time slot for the end time harvest and the manifestation of God's power and anointing upon this earth? Seems to me like it could. It, it's at least worth looking into and, and thinking about. So uh, that's important to to see in the Scripture. Now, let's go over to uh, the New Testament because there's some things in this New Testament that will help us understand it better. In Matthew, the 16th chapter, you'll notice in verse 27, says uh, Jesus says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, then shall he reward every man according to his works. 
Now, we re read from what the Apostle Paul wrote in Corinthians that we are rewarded for our works after we're raptured and we're in heaven. We'll be there seven years before we come back to the earth to rule and reign with Christ. Then in verse 28, he says, Verily I say unto you, there are some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, isn't that an awesome statement? Some of you stand here and won't taste death till you see this. Now, he wasn't talking about that the kingdom would come and Jesus would come in his kingdom. He said, you'll see it. It was a vision. Now, we, uh, chapter 17 says, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, up to a high mountain apart, was transfigured before him. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? He waited exactly six days. Now, remember that one of the keys to understanding the sequence and timing, the end time events is that a day is with the Lord a thousand years, a thousand years is a day. So Jesus waited exactly six, six days after he made that statement. Then he took Peter, James, and John up to a high mountain. Now remember, it's a high mountain. So here we are, we're on this high mountain again, and uh, there's Jesus, and he's talking with Moses and Elijah. Now isn't that something? Now, somebody said, well, that couldn't be a profile of the rapture because they only took three people with him, Peter, James, and John. Well, that's one of the clues. Peter, James, and John just happened to be, happened to be, <laughs> the ones he took with him when he went to raise the dead. Have you noticed that in the Scripture? They were called the sons of thunder, and, and they were with him when he raised the dead. So there's a resurrection. That reveals there's a resurrection of this event. And he was transfigured before them. His face did shine as sun, his raiment was white as light. Now, the only other place you find this is in the book of Revelation that this happened in Jerusalem. I believe, personally, they were caught up in the New Jerusalem, or the bodily or just in spirit form. I, I don't know. But uh, this vision, they were caught up in this vision, like John the Revelator was caught up into heaven. And they were in the New Jerusalem, evidently. Behold, there appeared Moses and Elias talking, or Elijah talking with them. And uh, now what are we going to say about this? Here's Moses and Elijah talking with them. Now Moses had been dead 1,500 years or 1,700 years at this time. And in the Old Testament, God said it's abomination to try to communicate with the dead. So Moses must be alive. He must be resurrected or he couldn't be talking with Jesus, or Jesus wouldn't be talking with him because it'd be abomination to God. <laughs> now, isn't that an interesting thought? But then here's Elijah. Elijah represents the church. He was caught up alive and didn't die. Now, you remember Moses died, but he was 120 years old when he died. He represents the righteous dead of 120 jubilees who died before they entered into the promised land. So this is no doubt, in my mind, this is a prophetic profile of the timeline of the rapture or catching away of the church, and they lived it out in reality in a vision form, like John the Revelator did when he was caught up into heaven in, in his vision. Now, he's talking to Elijah and Moses. Now, somebody said, well, well why is it Elijah and Moses? Uh, some say that, well, Moses and Elijah are the two witnesses, but uh, that Moses doesn't qualify for one of the two witnesses because the two witnesses that prophesy the last three and a half years of tribulation period, they die in the streets of Jerusalem the last three, three days before the end of the tribulation. Now, Moses, if he's been resurrected, he is immortal. He cannot die again, so he cannot die in the streets of Jerusalem. So you can X Moses out of that. Um, but I, personally, I, I believe it's uh, Enoch and Elijah because they have, neither one of them have died. Elijah evidently is still in heaven in, in his uh, natural body and probably eating of the tree of life. But anyway, uh, here we find that uh, it says, While they yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice came out of the cloud, said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Now notice, the cloud overshadowed them, and the voice came out of the cloud. 
Now, here's an interesting thought, that uh, when Peter uh, tells about this later, in, I think it was 1 Peter, he says, this voice we heard came from heaven. Well, they must have been in heaven then because it came out of the cloud and the cloud overshadowed them. So they must have been in heaven and the cloud was in heaven and it overshadowed them and the voice came out of heaven. So that seems to be more uh, in line with what it says here, that they were caught up into the new Jerusalem probably. And uh, then uh, you know that Jesus said, tell this vision to no man till the Son of Man be raised from the dead. Well, this is quite a startling event that happens in the New Testament. Now, remember the Solomon concept, Ecclesiastes 1, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, thing that is done, it is that which shall be done. And here's Jesus laying it out so plain that, that no one could miss it, at least when the revelation comes forth. We missed it for years. But when the generation comes on the scene that's going to be caught up, the revelation flows freely. So here it is. It's laid out. He waited six days. Now Luke says after about eight days, but you notice the word about. He didn't count them. <laughs> it was six days. Uh, Mark, I believe it's Mark and Matthew said it was six days. So Jesus waited six days. Why? Because it is a prophetic profile through the Solomon concept revealing this event that, that happened here reveals the rapture of the church. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that, that's exciting to me to know that God is able to reveal these things the way he does. Now, before I leave the broadcast, our book offer, again, this week is book offer number 2522. It's called End Time Events, Journey to the End of the Age. It's a 269-page paperback, and it's also the revised edition. We've, we've put some things in there about uh, that didn't get in the hardback book. It's $15 plus $4 postage and handling, and we have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400, and uh, you can also order by, w, uh, by Internet, www.charlescaps.com and uh, you can do your order on the internet. That 800 number again is 1-877-396-9400. Now, in this book, we have these uh, prophetic profiles laid out in here and also this skip sequence on this event that happened in Exodus 19. It's all in here. You can see it in the original Hebrew and how it's laid out. And it'll give you uh, the insight. And uh, also, here's, here's a page that it, it gives you some skip sequence that we found in 2 Kings. And uh, it's interesting how these things show up in the scriptures. There's no doubt about it. God is revealing to this generation what other generations didn't know. But this book will take you on a scriptural journey, revealing the sequence and timing of end time events in a way that uh, most people never thought of, and I know I didn't until the Lord revealed it to me. Uh, it's through the Solomon concept. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, e-books, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard.
Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Enrolling your child in Life Institute Christian School will leave them with an experience that they can proudly share with others. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute. Turn three of folks say it's time to change. It's time to change. It's time to change. Change for the better. Tell them change for the better. Change for the positive. Tell them change for your family. Change for your future. It's time to change. 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 Welcome to Power in the Word, the exciting teaching ministry of yours truly, Dr. Henry W. Roberts II. I am the founder and pastor of the Word of Life Community Church, one church, multiple locations to serve you and your entire family. Right now, I want you to call a neighbor, call a friend, let them know that Power in the Word is on the air. And after this, I'm going to come back and let you know how you may obtain a copy of today's message. So until I should see you again on this air, God bless you and keep you. Get ready to be blessed. So now watch. I told you to go to Hebrews 11 and 6. That what I told you? You see, you thought I forgot. Hebrews 11 and 6. Watch this. So now, the word of faith needs to be coming out of my mouth at all times. I, he, in one place, they put, all, put away all gossip, clamor, evil communication. See, so it, in order to really receive from God, it's more on me than it is on God. That's good. That's good, so it's certain things I can't let you pull me into. Even though I love you, but I can't let you pull me into because I got my faith has to constantly produce. I can't be walking around here mad. I can't walk in unforgiveness. No matter how bad you do me or talk about me, I, I, I can't hold it against you. I got to see you still, love you, love your past, what I know, and continue to minister to you. So then, I must make a personal commitment on purpose to do nothing but walk, talk, believe faith. Hebrews 11 and 6. Let me show you why. Read it? Read it. So now why? Y'all smart. Y'all considerably intelligent. So what pleases God? Faith. What pleases God? Faith. So when a person not in faith, they're what? They're displeasing to God. So you run around here complaining. Numbers 14, 26. Let's run. Come on. This for somebody. See, that's how important God, you are to God. Don't let nobody tell you you don't mean nothing to God. God erect the preacher's message just to talk to you. Amen. See, I got my little paper. I come in here ready. But let me show you something else. If this level 
of word was not in me. If I did not spend time every day praying in the Holy Ghost, four day in the morning up praying, do you know I, he couldn't just pull this up out of me? This is not memory. This is what I walk in. And the only thing I'm trying to convince you of is you don't have to be the preacher to walk in this. You're supposed to walk in this too. Where I tell you to go? 1426. Ready to read. Whoa, now these God folk, he's brought them out of Egypt. Now he they've gotten out here and he has to refer to his own folks as evil. He you in the church and you just Oh, y'all ain't want to say nothing. I'm going to say it again. Help me preach it. Help me preach it. You want to preach all the time? Tell me what pastor preaching. Huh? Preach now. Come on, preach now. Hear you in the church all the time and God calling these folk evil. Oh, I ain't get enough response. There are too many, but I'm going to sound louder. Hear you in the church all the time and God calling these folk evil. That's what I want to hear. Because sometimes you can be in the family, but don't have the ways of the family. So you far and really from the family. Then sometimes you can be baptized, speak in tongues, and just have some old evil, nasty ways. And the only way you're going to keep those evil, nasty ways and you've been filled with the Holy Ghost is you don't spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. He can't purge nothing out you then. He can't get you in a place where you by yourself and convict you of the stuff about you you need to change. You can find stuff on everybody else, but what you finding on yourself? You see all my flaws, but what about yours? Look at three folks say, you see all mine, but what about yours? Find all the faults you want in somebody else. Oh, but I feel the Michael Jackson song coming on. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that Church three folks folks say it's time to change. It's time to change. It's time to change. Change for the better. Tell them change for the better. Change for the positive. Tell them change for your family. Change for your future. It's time to change. 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 I mean, I want to make the world a better place. Take a look at yourself. Make that. Hey! Come on, finish read. Mary Hart do good like a medicine. The Lord sit on the throne and laugh at the things the devil do. So if I can get you to get this word with a little gizzle, you know how grandma used to have to get a little sugar for you to take that medicine? See, I've been getting you plenty of medicine today. Somebody's going to go home and have to use the bathroom all day long. Why? Let me tell you, spiritually, when God purges you, that stuff got to come out. You either gonna throw it up or it's fourteen twenty six start at the top. God said, How long you want me to put up with you? Keep reading. Always complaining, always arguing, always in some mess, always stirring up some foolishness. C come on, keep reading. God said, I heard you. I heard you. See, most folks thank God only hear him when he's praying. God is, don't ever close. He hears us all the time. He sees us all the time. Keep reading. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to say it just like the Holy Ghost said. Then when you be grinning in folk's face, all fake and phony, then talking about it. Please do me a favor. If you're doing me like that, stay out my face. 
Cause I'm serious because you know I'm saved now. I can't, I can't clock you in. So do me a favor since I'm trying to stay right with God and you don't care nothing about all that. If, if you really, with that foolishness, stay out of my faith. Let me just teach you. Just show them. Let me teach you. Don't act like you love me and don't love me. Keep reading. Which murmur against me? Truly as I live, says the Lord. Whoa. So will I do to you. See, so after I leave, paid my tithes, gave my all praise and worship, then run out the door, get with some more evil folk, go to murmuring, complaining, gossiping, keep up a bunch of food, and then wonder why my prayers can't get answered. Wonder why I can't get my breakthrough. That's my teaching deep. Give me five minutes on the clock. So now, go back to Matthew 4. Instead of going to verse 4, because basically I guess God just trying to teach you how to deal with the devil. Yeah. Matthew 4, go to verse 3 and read down to verse 4, because you need to see what happened before we got here. You got it? All right. Ready to read. When what? When what? Who came? So one form the devil will come to you in his temptation. Somebody to provoke you to do evil. Temptation don't always have to be with sex and different stuff. Just anything that's against the word of God. So the tempter, he comes in different many forms and shapes to, so he can get you off. He already off. See, and, and, and the reason why he's so upset with human beings that believe God is because you can get restored. He can't. I know that's good, bro. He can't. So, yeah, good, thank you. Because we're talking about the Father's heart. Watch this. So that means, just like we feel, when folk try to turn our children against us, that's how God feels when you let people influence you. Am I teaching today? Anybody getting help other than me? Okay, come on, let's read. Then we're going to go on, go on. Finish reading. Ready to read? Well, wait, 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 well, because I'm gone. I'm going to just shit this and... All right, Lord, I just, okay, whatever you want to say then, I tell you, man, 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 just don't have me writing all this stuff then. You just tell me what you want to do every day. We'll we just do that. <laughs> all right, ready to read. He said, if thou be son of God, command thee so and make bread. Keep reading. What you have to say, it is written. It is what? It is what? Hold your finger there and go to Romans, Romans 10, verse 8. See, this is a lifestyle you have to commit to, man. This is something you got to practice every day. Because else you'll be sliding back into your old ways, religious, and all that old stuff. Come on, read. What you say is, the word is not me, even in my mouth, and in my heart. Flip back. Flip the word is near you. Okay, flip back to four, verse four at the top part. Watch how it come together. See, people always talking about the Bible contradict yourself. Right, I'm gonna put it together for you. All right, read that verse again. It is what? It is what? Flip back to ten and eight, top part eight. For what saith it? The what? The what? The word is nigh thee. The word is nigh thee. Where? All right, come on back, come on back, come on back. Four, three, ready, read. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, may I 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 be the Son of God, Back in Matthew, he came right back in, in Romans 
repent and show it to you again. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then you go over here, he says it's written. What was he talking about? The word. Then he go in, the, in that Romans 10 and 8 and say, for what saith it? What are you talking about? It, the Bible, what's written? What's written? What's written? See, so, so when the enemy attacks you, and he's going to attack. If you can't respond with the word, the attack is going to intensify. Watch, even when Jesus responded back with the word, let's read a little bit further. Since we got a little time, can I have five minutes of your time? All right, come on, read. The next verse, the next verse. Then the devil taking him up, took, uh huh, set him on a pinnacle, said unto him, Now, now, watch this. This was not on a test about what was in him, but about who he was. So that means the first phase, he didn't know enough word. He, 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 he was trying to see if he had enough word in it. Second phase, he wanted to know if, who, if he really knew who he was. It's like I was telling you the illustration. Boy, that's good. See, I don't go come make a full circle. When I gave this to about somebody got a gun in the movie, they got a gun. I said, boy, you ain't finna shoot nobody. Give me that gun. Take the gun from him. He was trying to take the gun right there. Why? Because if Jesus didn't know who he was, it wasn't you. If Jesus didn't know who he was, watch this. Watch this. Then he could have took him out. But because Jesus, number one, knew the word, Number two, knew who he was. With that word, he was able to operate in full authority. Okay? Keep reading. See, not, not what, did you just see what happened? The devil tried to use the word. Yeah. But now if you research the scripture, he was off one or two words. Yeah, just like you talk to somebody, they be trying to act like they know the word, go to quote, quote scripture, skin in the scripture, slap up. It's the spirit of the devil. Spirit of deception. Man shall not live by bread. See, you can't, this stuff right here, you can't fake. Amen. This stuff you got to walk in. Amen. You got to know it like you know your name. Amen. He kept referring back to what was written. Now how you gonna know what's written and you don't pick up the Bible to Sunday? You might come on a Wednesday. You might not. Let alone talking about intense study. I'm not just talking about a little quiet devotional time before I get in the car and go to work. Say my prayer, read two or three scriptures. That's good. That's good to develop that discipline I'm going to need to push me further in God. Are you listening to me? But if I'm going to really walk in this power and in the Father's nature, I have to on purpose become one with the word of God. Keep reading. Written again. I want you right on here. Come on, finish. We're going to finish. Keep reading. Stop. Go back up. Read that again. All these, all these, all these, what are you going to do? Wow, stop, stop. Reflect. So just because sometimes you got a few things don't mean you got them from God. He said all these things will I give you. So that means he does have some permission to distribute some. He like bling, cars, houses. Ask the entertainment industry. Ask the heathen who doesn't worship God. I'm talking about the billion now who has no regards for God. Ask the religious man who has, that his money has him thinking that he's all that. All these 
Chinese? T-H-I-N-G-S. Well, I give. See, the devil don't mind giving you a dollar to keep you away from a thousand. Did you see the margin, the comparison I gave you? See, and every time, every time I don't pay my tithes, give proper offerings, I'm, I'm, I'm increasing that margin. Because the key to scripture is being willing to obey. So that's why in this church, we don't take up a one offering that's at the end of service. Sometimes y'all know you have to remind me to take up money and, and know we got to pay these bills. Wow, wasn't that word good? You can obtain a copy of today's message by simply calling or writing us or even emailing us at the information that will be located on the screen. Word of Life is a need-meeting church with several opportunities to serve you and your entire family. We have activities for children, youth, teens, adults. I mean, we, we try to touch the total man. We got a gym you can work out in. We got a soup kitchen that's open every Thursday. I'm telling you, there's not a place where you can't serve. So if you're looking for a place to serve, learn, and grow, then consider the Word of Life Community Church. And until next time, on the same station at the same time, remember that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and you'll be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Power in the Word. To order a copy of today's message, simply write to Power in the Word, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama, 36611. We would love to have you come fellowship with us at Word of Life Community Church located at 111 South Florida Street in East Brooklyn, Alabama. Our service times are Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. for Sunday school, followed by an 11 o'clock worship service, and on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our Power Hour Bible Study. For more information, log on to our website or call 251-456-2652 or 251-809-2887. Here's the ways that you can stay connected to the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network. You can go to the following websites, www.powerintheword.org or www.wordoflifetv.org. You can also view us on Ustream by going to www.ustream.tv forward slash channel forward slash life television. You can also view us on the Roku channel by clicking on the channel store going to the category titled new and clicking on life television network you can also tune into life radio network by going to the website www.tunein.com going to the search bar typing in life radio network and there you will find our station for those of you who are in chickasaw or the surrounding areas you can tune in to us on 87.9 fm you can also stay connected to us by way of social media by going to YouTube, typing in the search bar, Word of Life TV Network. You can also like us on Facebook by going to the search bar and typing in Life TV. You can also follow Dr. Roberts on Twitter by going to www.twitter.com forward slash HWROB2. We here at the Word of Life Community Church and Life Television Network thank you for your continued support. Hello friend, I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship, not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation, and I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place, call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons 
and we need to be, be, have a place that we can meet around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens iron. So does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Now it's a time when we can all participate in this. This gives you a great opportunity. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, you may be sitting behind that television screen, internet, or on your screen of your computer saying, what must I do to be saved? I am so glad you asked. It's very simple. Jesus said, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Call upon me and I will answer you. You know what? He's sitting there waiting for you to call him. All you got to do is pray this prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you. That your word declares that if I will confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, that I would be saved. Now, God, I renounce the hidden works of the darkness, and I ask Jesus to come into my heart, come into my life, and save me, redeem me. I thank you, God, for my sins being forgiven, and I thank you for coming into my life and saving me. I believe I receive my salvation right now. Wow, it's just that simple. Listen, I want to put a powerful tool in your hand. It's free. If you pray this prayer with me or you're just watching the broadcast and you desire to know more about your salvation, I have a little book I wrote some time ago called What is Salvation? I want to put a copy of this book in your hand. It can be read in one easy setting. You can share it after you get through with it, leave it in a bathroom, or share it with your friends or your family members. But it talks about what salvation is, what salvation isn't, and how you can obtain salvation and maintain your, your new walk with Christ. I want to welcome you to the family of God, and thank you for tuning in each and every week or however you may watch this broadcast. And I thank you for your support, your prayers, and your seed. God bless you, and keep remembering that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, you be blessed. To receive your copy of the book, What is Salvation? Simply write to Word of Life Community Church, 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama. And remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. You be blessed. Be sure to check your local listings for the days and times that you can view the Power in the Word broadcast. Life Community Church is here to serve you with one church in four locations. In Pritchard, Alabama, located at 1682 South Atmore Avenue, on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. In Chickasaw, Alabama, located at 351 South Craft Highway, on Sundays at 10 o'clock a.m. and 11 o'clock a.m. And in East Bruton, Alabama, located at 111 Florida Street, on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. And in Pascagoula, Mississippi, located at 3705 Burden Avenue on Thursdays at 7 o'clock p.m. For more information, log on to our website at www.powerintheword.org. This has been another edition of Power in the Word. On behalf of Dr. Henry and Sherry Roberts and the entire Word of Life Community Church family, we say God bless. Tune in next week to another edition of Power in the Word. And remember that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Until next time, God bless. You're tuned in to Life Television Network, your number one Christian station.
Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. Are you looking for an accredited school to enroll your child in? If so, then Life Institute Christian School is indeed your school. Life Institute Christian School serves grades K-12 and utilizes an individualized accelerated Christian education curriculum that allows the student to achieve attainable educational goals at his or her own pace. Enrolling your child in Life Institute Christian School will leave them with an experience that they can proudly share with others. Allow your child to obtain a valuable education here at Life Institute Christian School on the campus of Word of Life Community Church. For more information about the school, call 251-456-2652. family and friends if you have questions we have answers at our faith talk tuesday bible study with dr dexter easley you have what you want but i choose to speak what i desire so when i speak it so i declare in the name of jesus lord god i thank you for the automobile i thank you lord god that i'm able to receive it and father god i'm speaking according to your word that if i call those things it's not as though i desire them to be i must act like it's so. So Father, I'm going to get into this car that I have now, and I'm going to act like I already have what I want. I got pictures of what I want. I got things that I can see. So now my mind, my whole body is focused on what... Now, I don't care what nobody else says. They come in the house and say, why you got that thing sitting up there? Got what you want? You can't afford that. Father, in the name of Jesus... Faith Talk worship services begin at 7 o'clock p.m. So come and have those questions answered at Faith Talk Tuesday evenings right here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And we look forward to seeing you here. Welcome to the broadcast today. I'm Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And I am excited about today's lesson. We're talking about overcoming a prodigal family. First of all, let me tell you what a prodigal family is. Many of us know the story in Luke chapter 15 where it talks about the prodigal son. And that, in that story, we see three things. Number one, we see a son that, is, that wants to get his, get his possessions and leave. And then secondly, we see a father that loves them and loves their family. And then we see a son, an elder son, that uh, got a little upset. So there's three dynamic truths in this particular parable. Also, too, we found out that Jesus, yes, Jesus teaching this parable is one of the longest parables when we start talking about the dynamics in that particular chapter. Talked about the sheep, talked about the, the, the coin, and now he's talking about the lost son. Let's go into the message already in progress, and I'll be right back in just a few minutes. We're going to be talking about how to overcome those things that happens in families. Now, today's lesson we'll be looking at how to build a strong family after a painful situation. After a painful situation happens, how do we recover? How do we build a strong family in order for us to be able to, to deal with those situations? Also, too, when we talk about those situations, we're talking about relating to unbelieving spouse, having someone that don't believe. We also, when we talk about building a strong family after a painful situation, we're talking about uh, uh, being divorced, uh, being a widow, a single parent, unfaithfulness of a spouse and when children uh, go astray 
uh, uh, from the Lord. They leave God. We're talking about all of those things that family comes into and has to face. And we've got to be real with this. And, and, and I was at the first service, and I hope you guys are a little bit, treat me a little bit better. They didn't say they love me, but I know y'all love me. Praise God. But, but families have situations, and we go through things, right? But sometimes we don't want to talk about it. Or, or, or we hear somebody give a religious uh, thing by saying, oh, yeah, d- d- you know, uh, 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 just uh, love on Jesus. Uh, go out and do the best you can. But we don't really get the how-tos to really make a successful and strong family within that. We just don't. We get, we get to, we, to understand. I'm not taking anything from the Bible. I've said that we're, we, we believe in the Word of God. But a lot of times families have a tendency to go to church, hear a great word, and still don't function. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do this real quick. How many of us here today is from a dysfunctional family? Uh, and I saw most of you was afraid to raise your hand. Now, I can tell you was not in the first service. I've already came to the conclusion that every one of us have come from a, dis- a dysfunctional family. I know, I know what you say. Well, I had my mother and father, and you may have, but there was some dysfunctional things going inside. You know, there's a dysfunctional situation when you, when you, you know, when you eat peanut butter with banana sandwich. That's a, that's dysfunctional. <laughs> what do you just say? When you eat peanut butter with banana slice on a sandwich and eat it, somebody does that. I can Somebody sit there. They do that. They do that. Okay. Who 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 like that? Who don't like it? Who don't like that? Who don't like that kind? Of, okay, 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 all right, all right, all right, okay, all right, all right. How many like ketchup on grits? I saw that. I saw that. Oh God. Okay, I saw that. I did see it. I saw. I saw it. I saw it. I couldn't believe it. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> dysfunctional. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Cool. What I mean by that is that if we look at our families today. We all would be at a place of saying, you know what, there was some, our family family was a little strange. You know, and it doesn't mean that they were weird or bad or anything like that. It just simply means that all of us have come from families that maybe don't function like other families do or even like uh, the word function, but actually was dysfunctional. When you hear the word prodigy or the prodigal son, we, we hear the word prodigal, we're actually talking about something that has desired to separate itself from something else and it's prodigy meaning this way if and we, we say well the prodigal son they talk about the prodigal son and everything else but you can also be a prodigal against the word or from the word in other words you can have left the foundation of the word and start practicing things that's not of the word and you have left the word so when you leave the word that means you're what a prodigal. are you with me so, so when we talk about that, we're not merely just talking about the prodigal son here, and we're not just talking about necessarily just sin alone. We're talking about sin as well as the way we operate things. And that's why it's so important to understand the basic fundamentals of family. And now when you come to a church, you usually hear the preaching of the word, teaching of the word. But when it comes to this bone, I call, I call it flesh on the bone, when you begin to get some things that you're going to be able to go home and apply to your life, that's when the Word of God has to function in your life to build a strong, successful family. God never does anything in secret. Okay, all right, all right, see, I got some problems. What I mean by that is, is that he would not want to be a secret God or a mystical God and then give us 66 books to know him. That's not a mystery, you know, he, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't write, three, you know, 66 books about him and show us how to get close to him and then try to hide himself from us. I don't think he's doing that. I think... Because we don't hear those fundamental truths in order to help us to be strong. So first of all, we got to establish this, is that we got to establish that anything happens to us, whether it's a single parent, whether it's divorce, whether you've been through difficult times, if you got a child that's gone gone astray from God, whatever that situation is, if you are a believer, you have the overcoming power of Jesus on the inside of you. You have already overcame every situation. Can I get one amen for that? Amen. No, you are winning. Your family will be successful because you are a born again believer. I'm not getting many amens. I think I'm going to have to. I felt the same way in earlier service. But, you know, we got to quit making excuses and start walking in the word when it comes to our lives and our family. You know, you hear excuses like this. Don't get angry. Calm down. 
you know, single parent. They're there, they're mad, they're upset. I'm a single parent. I got these kids, and I'm a single. And they're saying it almost like I am their problem. <laughs> no, no, those kids didn't just pop up. Yeah. <laughs> those, you didn't go home one day and you saw three kids in your living room, you know, say, hey, what's up? No, no, something happened. And something went on. Now, don't think I'm making fun of you and don't think I'm trying to, but, but let, let's quit weighing that tag of I'm just a single parent. I can't make it. Yes, you can. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then you have those other ones that we, we look at, oh, well, you know, Pastor, I, I, you know, I used to be real good until I got a divorce. Well, you know, I've been divorced and, you know, and, uh, and, and I, can't, I, can't, I can't make it, you know, I'm not like y'all. Y'all, you know, you hadn't been through what I went through. And it's all this sadness of, of that God cannot heal that divorce. God cannot cause you to overcome it. Now, we're not encouraging divorce. That's not what we're saying. But we say things happen in your life. But when they happen in your life, don't stay there. God has given you the overcoming power of God to overcome every situation. So quit, quit, play, quit blaming others, quit, quit looking at others to help you get out. God has already given you the key to get out, amen? amen? Now, I have to say this at the beginning of the lesson because when we go through the lesson, I don't want you to begin to zero in on your, on your inadequacies or, or that I'm not this and I'm not that and, and, you know, I didn't come from that type of family and, and blah, blah, blah and all that. Those are excuses that you're rendering to not experiencing all of God, amen? amen? Now, let's go and do this. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. I know that was an introduction. Look at verse 4. It says, for whatever is born of God does what? Overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God does what? Overcomes the world. Notice now, it, you're not overcoming the world. You overcome the world. In other words, whatever the world has for you or against you cannot prosper. Now watch this, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. Our what? Faith. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. So now, now that's the first step. Now when we start talking about overcoming the prodigal family, we must first start off with how are we going to overcome it? We're going to overcome it by the power of Jesus Christ living and dwelling in us. Now go over to Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Now, when you're born again, Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, I know you turned over to Ephesians. Stay right there where you are, but put on the board up here on the screen, not board on the screen, uh, John chapter 3, and let's look at verse 1. John chapter 3 and verse 1. When you look over there at John chapter 3 and verse 1, we see this whole born-again experience. It says, there was a man uh, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, verse 2. And then it goes on and says, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these things or these signs that you do unless God is with them. Look at verse 3, what it says here. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is what? Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So I must be born again in order to see the kingdom of God. I'll put it this way. In order to be born again, when I'm born again, I become a family of God. Amen. Now go over to the next verse in this next verse, verse 4. And watch this. Not only, not only see the kingdom. And then Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Now verse 5 is unique. Watch this now. <laughs> it says, Jesus asked us, most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is what? born of water and spirit he cannot do what enter the kingdom now you can see the kingdom when you're born again you can see the kingdom you see how the kingdom operates and then number two when you're born again you're able to be able to live in the kingdom of god amen so born again when you're born again jesus christ is lord of your life even if your last name was johnson or easley or or whatever your last name is right now it's regardless of whatever that last name is, regardless of what your genealogy is, it's regardless of any of those things. When you become born again, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 
What I'm doing, I'm establishing, first of all, that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, you have no longer that old nature. You've been born again. And as a result of you being born again, your name has been changed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, are you there? Uh, first, uh, first Corinthians 5, 17. Uh, did I say 2 Corinthians? What's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You're giving me some correction. Praise him. All right, 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All right. There we go. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. Amen. How many born again people I have in here? Yeah. Glory to God. You are new. Amen. 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 You're brand new. And because you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, all things are what? So that old life is over. You're brand new. Amen. And because you're brand new, you're under another family. And you are a part of the family of God. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you for your overwhelming excitement. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. And we're still establishing. I know you say, wow, Pastor. We, yeah, I got to establish this foundation. Because some people assume that when I say that you're an overcomer, that I'm just throwing something out there, a scripture we want to put on our refrigerator or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying literally because you are born again, your DNA has been changed. I'm not talking about your blood DNA. I'm talking about the blood brought right in Jesus Christ. You have been changed, and now you are living at the top pinnacle of your life, being born again. Amen. Now, your situation may be messed up, as we say in the street, jacked up. <laughs> but, it doesn't, it, but it doesn't mean that your situations dictate to where you're going and who you are. Can I get an Amen. Now, look over to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 14. Praise God. Are you there, class? It says here, For this reason I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom, watch this now, the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. Glory to God. Amen. You have a new name. Hallelujah. Now, what's so powerful about this is, you may want to write this down, what's so powerful about this is when you become born again, and you become a part of a new family, the family of God, all your generational curses, everything that your mama, them had. Yeah, you heard I said them had. <laughs> mama, them. All of them, that curse have been rooted out of your life as a result of you being born again. So what do I mean? I mean that that curse that was in your generation has no power over you and your family and your seed. Why? Because, see, you have laid an axe to the root. Now, most people, when they hear this, they immediately say, Oh, Lord, have mercy. You're telling me, well, what I'm dealing with then, Pastor? You're dealing with what's called iniquity. Say that with me, the word iniquity. The iniquity is a, is, is a powerful word, but it, it's a simple word because it comes from a root word called wicker. And most of the time when you go by and you see those ladies making those baskets, or we sometimes call wicker chairs or basket chairs, you see it what? Twisted. And so what, what iniquity is, iniquity is a twisted way of thinking. A twisted way of thinking. So you may not be dealing with a curse as a believer. You may be dealing with the iniquities of the curse. In other words, when it's iniquity of a curse, you have tendencies that others may don't feel when they get around a certain thing. Okay, all right. Y'all holding back on me, I see. Okay, all right. Like, you can be saved five years. I know this never happened in here, but let me get it straight on television. Um, it may never happen on television, so don't cut me off. But, you know, it, it may happen somewhere else, like a far, far place. You know, you've been saved 10 years, and all of a sudden, from nowhere, out of nowhere, you have an urge for butt and wiser. I'm just, I'm just saying. It just, out of nowhere, you just have an urge. It's just some people saying, "Yeah, Pastor, oh gosh, gosh." I mean, I didn't know he got going. Some of y'all, some of y'all don't catch that later on, okay? And said, "Why did he break it up for, for you know, for you know, copyright reasons?" Amen. But you may have, you may have an urge for something that you normally would not have an urge for. It just came up. Have anybody did that before? Not, not but wasn't, but whatever it is. Or, or, or. Or, or you're minding your business, and then you find out in your family there is this trace of alcoholism or addiction. 
So, so, so when, I, when the curse is gone, the curse is gone. You don't have that curse in your family anymore. When you're born again, that stops at that at acts been placed to the root. So what people are dealing with, what's called iniquities. And iniquities, you're dealing, I don't know why I'm telling you this, because the word family has come from the word familiar, and of course familiar spirits is connected to family. So I think this is good to put this right in here. Okay, so, so, so you can be free to understand that, okay, because Uncle Bobo was a womanizer. Got it. You started off as a womanizer, but you got born again, and an axe had been placed on that, and now you no longer are a womanizer, but there is iniquities. Twist the way of thinking that sometimes comes up that overtakes you that normally wouldn't overtake anybody else. For example, there are things that you would never do, whether you were saved or not saved. Some of you in here would never steal. Okay, well, praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, all right. Let me go over here. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know what I'm dealing with over there. But, 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 but some of you would never steal. Never, you would never do it. It's not a temptation to you. I can sit you, we can be driving, I can put $5 on the counter, I come back, $5 is there. Amen. Amen. But I can put somebody else there that have, a, ha, have that iniquity or that thinking in, in their family, and they, 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 they're not going, they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. But, but, but because that temptation is there, they have to fight it. Got it? You have to fight pornography. You, you, you got to fight it. You can't just allow it to control your life because once it controls your life and then you begin to act out on it. And what you do, you end up beating up yourself. Quiet. Whatever it is. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? But you have been forgiven. You have been released of that curse. And now you are now have to bring your mind in subjection to the word of God. Amen. That's how you build a strong family. Now write this down. In every strong family, there is an absolute. I'll say it again. In every strong family, there is an absolute. In other words, there are things that are absolutely solid foundation. Some of you call them this way. They are deal breakers. Anybody here use those terms? Uh, now, now, the way you establish this in your family is not by... Well, first of all, I want to thank you for joining the broadcast today. Secondly, I want to give you an opportunity to receive this CD absolutely free. All you have to do is call the number on the screen right now. Operators are waiting on your phone call. Yes, they'll be able to send you out the CD. Also, too, they would also pray for you. If you have any family needs, they, they'll pray for you, believe God with you. All those things are absolutely free. We want to be a blessing to you. So call right now on the screen. We want to be able to send the CD out to you absolutely free. Now, if you're not born again, if Jesus Christ is not Lord of your life, this is your opportunity to receive Christ as the Lord of your life. What I'm simply saying is that if you don't know for sure that your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, that you don't know for sure that heaven is your home, this is an opportunity for you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Also, too, if you say, Pastor, you know, I, I, I am a Christian, but I walked away from God, start living my own life. I'm like that prodigal son that you're talking about in that story. Well, this is your time to rededicate your life to Christ. Yes, God never left you. You may have left him, but he never left you. He's there with you always, and he loves you, and he cares for you. The Bible simply says all you have to do is repent, according to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. And then there come a time of refreshing from the presence of God. I want to pray for you right now. Would you bow your head where you are right now if you can? Would you just say this prayer along with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. I renounce them all. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, 
If you said that prayer and you meant it with your whole heart, call us here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. We have a course, a book, a course, and also to a CD that we want to send out to you. We're also too going to going to send you a daily devotion that's going to help you grow in the things of God. Call the number on the screen right now, or go to our website, go to our contact area there, and contact us and begin to let us know. Say, I got saved today, I got born again today, and I like to get the free literature, and they'll send it out to you absolutely free. Yes. That that devotion book will be seven days of personal devotion that you can take your time and go through each day. Then also, too, you're going to have that daily bread where you can every day you have a morning devotion and you'll be able to walk through, build you up in faith. And thirdly, you have a CD that I'm going to send you called Living in Your Righteousness. In other words, you need that CD because it helps you to be able to stay on track and begin to walk this principle of this new life out in Christ Jesus. Now, also, too. We want to encourage you to do this. Now, if you receive Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, I need you to get in a Bible teaching church, a church that's going to teach you the word of God, that's going to help you grow in the things of the Lord. There's a lot of great churches all over the world. And I'm telling you right now, there's one in your area that you can get connected to and you can actually grow. Now, some of you may already be a part of a church. So I'm asking you to go back and be the best you can be within that church. Begin to uh, get it plugged into that ministry and begin to help that ministry uh, grow and flourish. So uh, we want to begin to believe God for you as well. So if you're looking for churches, if you say, well, I'm in, uh, in a state and I'm, I, I'm not a part of a church, but I, I'm looking for one. Why don't you go to our website? You go to our website and put in there looking for a church and put your area in there, and we can send you some churches in your area that can truly be a blessing to you. We just want to help you get plugged in, help you grow in the things of the Lord. Well, this is Pastor Dexter Easley of New Life Christian Fellowship Church telling you to experience new life. God bless you. See you next time. But you need to talk about it. You need to talk about, okay, what, what are those things that you can do? It's okay to do that. It's okay to do that because now you're setting some boundaries in your family. Most Christian family does this. We got the Bible, we say, we love God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And they're having rough time in accomplishing wealth in their life, accomplishing joy in their life, fulfillment in their life. And I can go just look, just plain old happy. They ain't even happy. They just, they just in the family. Uh, gonna be, I'm gonna die this way. No, you know, no, you know, you could, you could actually enjoy your marriage. You can enjoy your family. Overcoming a prodigal family. Call now for a free CD of today's broadcast. Dial one eight six six nine one zero life. That's one eight six six nine one zero five four three three. Doctor Easley would like you to have this free CD. Call our phone representative at eight six six nine one zero five four. 33 today to get this offer. We are waiting for your call. Visit our website at newlifegcsc.org where you'll find more series by Dr. Easton. To all of our covenant members, partners, family, and friends, if you have questions, we have answers at our Faith Talk Tuesday Bible study with Dr. Dexter Easley. You have what you want. But I choose to speak what I desire. So when I speak it, so I declare in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for the automobile. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm able to receive it. And Father God, I'm speaking according to your word. That if I call those things, it's not as though I desire them to be. I must act like it's so. So Father, I'm going to get into this car that I have now. And I'm going to act like I already have what I want. I got pictures of what I want. I got things that I can see. So now my mind, my whole body is focused on what. Now, I don't care what nobody else says. They come in the house and say, why you got that thing sitting up there? That what you want? You can't afford that. Father, in the name of Jesus. Faith Talk worship services begin at 7 o'clock p.m. So come and have those questions answered at Faith Talk Tuesday evenings right here at New Life Christian Fellowship Church. And we look forward to seeing you here. We would like to invite you to connect with Dr. Easley on Twitter at Dr. Dexter Easley. On Facebook facebook.com nlcfgcsc on youtube dexter easley ministry and visit our website at newlifegcsc.org stay connected
Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. W-A-B-D. We are the Gulf Coast hit music station. Car smash? Hurt? Don't wait. No referral, no payment, no cash? No problem. Waiting one month, two months, three months? That's not good. The other car insurance say, why do you wait? One month, two months, three months. Now the court in D.C. will see you possibly today. I say, I'll see you right away. Don't wait. One month, two months, three months. One call, that's all, at 476-PAIN. The choice is yours. Join Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and Dr. Caroline Leaf on the Believer's Voice of Victory as they discuss how your mind determines your identity and God has given you the power to change your mind. Hello, everybody. I'm Kenneth Copeland. That's Gloria Copeland, and that's Dr. Caroline Leaf, and this is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Praise God. We're going to have a good time all the day and all the rest of this week. And those of you that were with us last week, you know that uh, we've got a, uh, we, we have a, this very specially anointed Dr. Caroline Leaf in this, in this studio today. And it's, it's so important to have uh, God's view, not just the scientific view, are not just the common view, but what does God say about it? And particularly when you're dealing with the spirit or you're dealing with the mind, the soul, really, uh, the spirit, then soul, then body, in that order. The body being the least important. The spirit and the soul made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions, the, the intellectual part of you. The spirit and the soul live on when the body is gone. The spirit, your soul, is part of your spirit. Therein is the mind. But now, what happens to the mind? if the brain is not functioning correctly. Mm -hmm. you, have a, you have a dilemma. You do. Because the mind cannot express itself. It, 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 it's, it's locked up in a, in an, a place of, of incapacitation. Then the, then the spirit and the body are severely hindered, particularly when it comes to doing any... Uh, obeying God or doing anything to bless and, and to uh, uh, carry out God's assignments in the earth. So we need people like Caroline Leaf Amen. that God has called a, as a, a, a specialist in that part of the kingdom. Um, Glory and I were called in the arena of faith. Now, we, we deal with and, and talk about a lot of other things. But that, that's, that's our major thrust. That's what God told us uh, over 50 years ago. Teach my people faith. Yeah. And so to have you here is a pleasure. Oh. And it is a, it is a divine opportunity yeah. for all of us. Thanks. And we Praise want you to know we appreciate you. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored. Thank Father, you. Father, we thank you for sending Caroline to us. We open our hearts and we open our minds to receive revelation from heaven. And we thank you for it, and we give you all the praise and the glory for it, Lord Jesus. 
In that great and precious name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's Thank open you. to our, what I like to call the golden text for last week and this week in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. I li and I like to read it this way. But he has given us the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of a sound mind. I love that. So to deal with a sound mind, you have to have a sound brain with which it can function. Exactly. And through which, really is a better, yes. better phrase. Yes, exactly. Through which the mind functions and expresses itself. Yeah. And, um, I, and I will re remind us again of this. And Jesus talked about the rich man, Lazarus, uh, the beggar, died and was carried into the bosom of Abraham in the paradise. And the rich man was carried into hell. And one of the first things Abraham said to him is, Son, remember. Now, his brain was not there, but his spirit and his mind were. His memory, his emotions, he got emotional about his, about his family. They, he doesn't want them to come to this, this burning, hellish place. And, and he, he's, he, he's he, now all of a sudden he's very evangelistic. And he's, he's begging for them and, and so forth. So all of his emotions and everything are intact. Mm -hmm. The point being, the memory is not in the brain. The memory uses the brain that stores memory, but life's memories are inside the spirit of a man. It's, yes. it's categorized, and it's all in there. Exactly. I read, I heard you say the same thing. I read after uh, Dr. Ben Carson. And he said, <laughs> if anybody could ever get to the place where they used 100% of their brain, they would rule the world. Now, Quote the figures. They're so astonishing at the data that's in this, this little pumpkin <laughs> and the, the millions of, of just things that's in there. Okay, so you want some numbers? It's in yes, I do. Okay, let me give you the numbers. Let me speak loud so you can hear me. Yes, please. <laughs> so your brain's about the size of your that's two fists. Loud. That's loud. <laughs> I'll have to ask God one day. I'm a public speaker and I have the quietest voice. So anyway, it makes me work harder. So your brain is the size of your two fists. It's made up of about 100 billion neurons, which is 20% of brain tissue. So there's another 80% of different brain tissue. We only understand around about 10% of how the brain functions. Each neuron, and there's 100 billion neuron, each neuron, for example, as you are listening to me now, at speeds of 10 to the 27, which is faster than 400 billion actions per second, you are transforming my words and all the stimulation around you, visual and so on, into physical structures inside of your brain. So when I say, say you, it's your spirit and your mind are taking what you're hearing, generating that energy through the brain. The brain responds and genetic expression happens and you actually physically build at that huge speed little protein structures on top of the neurons, little branches. So as you're listening to me now, you're growing these branches. You can grow anything from a few thousand to a few million branches. If you have a few million branches, for every, you grow a branch for every piece of information that you're gathering. So in a, in a talk like this of around 20 minutes, we will speak about 5,000 facts. So you'll grow about 5,000 branches holding our information. Those branches are made of proteins. Those branches, you can grow, as I said, anything up to a million plus. You're on these 100 million. It gets even bigger. 
you can eat inside one neuron and you've got a hundred billion more or less inside one we have these very important little structures that we call microtubules that do a lot of things including being involved in memory so when you meditate they're activated you have about 10 million per neuron and there's a hundred billion neurons per brain and that's only 20 percent of brain tissue then those little microtubules break up into small so for every branch that you grow they break up so you have more and more of them so one neuron has 10 million but if you have a million branches growing on the one neuron then that 10 million multiplies into more millions each of those millions and millions and millions of microtubules are made up of little tiny proteins they're like little rolled up like a, a sort of a, a sheet of like little beads and they roll up and so there's millions of those things each of the little beads which are little proteins are quantum neurobiological computers and that's what we are using it's almost like that's where the spirit is in the mind of working into those little computers and they operate like these little quantum energy computers that we're building with our thoughts and that's where our thoughts the mind part of our thoughts are stored and they connect with the physical part of where our thoughts are stored and we have Trillion, trillions and kabillions and gazillions, we don't even have the number of words for those things. Those. One, and we have kabillions and gazillions, one is more powerful than the entire, all the computers on the entire planet. So, so now if you ever get I mean, confused, you know why. <laughs> it's, all the, it's all those things in there going. Exactly, exactly. But that's just the power. So God has designed that kind of power in our brain. That kind of, I mean, I'm starting to understand this now. This is memory research. I've got a whole lot in this book about the memory research to show the magnificence of our design. And that is only, your brain has to be brilliant because your mind is even more brilliant. Oh, yeah. Because your mind oh, is connected to your spirit. Yes. So your spirit works with your mind and it's got to express through a very complex structure. And then you add so. to that, once a person accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior, Changes and, and the, the, the spirit is recreated and brought back to the level with God, then we have the mind of Christ. Exactly. Which Christ is the Greek translation of the word Messiah, and both Hebrew Messiah and, and uh, Greek Christ is the English word anointed. We have power. The we same have so much power. Anointing power exactly. available for our minds that Jesus functioned in while he was on the earth. Now you see that's the thing. I mean that is so oh that's God. mind blowing in a good sense. And and if we get a revelation of that, when we get a revelation of what it means to get in a rhythm with the spirit. Literally, we get our minds renewed and in a rhythm with the spirit. We're accessing that kind of power. And we see science showing us the impact of that power. We don't even need science to show us. We have our gut instinct. We know, for example, if we are in a toxic mindset, or we are grumpy, or wake up grumpy, or whatever, we know the day goes wrong. We know that if we speak um, horrible words to someone, we know that we feel horrible and that they feel, we feel the impact. So we don't need a scientist to tell us what we instinctively know to be true, that we as humanity have life and death in the power of our tongue, which is coming from you know, all those scriptures. It's there. It's, it, it's in existence. You break someone or you build someone with your words. And, you know, I saw this in my practice, Brian Kenneth. I saw this so much. My patients would come into my practice with, I chose, let me give you a bit of background. I practiced clinically for 25 years. I'd done brain research for 30. I still do brain research. I still do clinical trials. I work with teams of doctors, neurosurgeons, neurologists, neuroscientists. We're starting a huge clinical trial in January um, where we're looking at non-pharmacological interventions for people with anxiety and depression. In other words, no medicine, mind. Get your mind right, get your life right kind yeah. of situation. So I took this approach in my practice and I've translated all of this into my materials and whatever, but essentially I would work with the worst of the worst. Everyone, there was always this population that people didn't want to work with in, in, in the world of therapy, the, the adolescents and the really difficult people. So I chose in my practice from the beginning, from day one, to take those with the worst brain damage, the worst emotional problems, and get into the worst parts of South Africa to actually work in the trenches with people that have been abused, raped, etc., etc. So I've had extensive experience working with broken humanity for honestly close to 30 years, hands-on 
broken humanity, rejected humanity. And one of the first things that I would see in, in and it came from experience, etc., was that people had this impression of themselves that they didn't measure up, that they weren't good enough, mm -hmm. and that they had no, and that took away the sense of purpose and hope. We spoke about hope yesterday in, in last week's Friday broadcast. And when someone lo had loses a sense of purpose and hope, which is totally tied into identity, and they don't feel that they measure up, they then have there's this meaninglessness. There's this, and it leads to tremendous inner conflict and tremendous confusion. And then people start becoming the failures that people tell them that they are. So the mind then changes the reality of the brain. You spoke, as you introduced the segment today, you spoke about how if our brains aren't working properly, then our minds can't mm -hmm. express themselves. Our minds change the structure of the brain. That's the power that we have from God, the mind of Christ. It changes the structure of the brain. So therefore, if we are going to think that we have our failures, we change our brain to become a failure. So our mind is changing the structure of the brain. The brain simply does what the mind tells it to do. Well, and that know, is I why just, we have I, to I renew our something. mind. It's something I've, I've known a long time, but I just more clearly saw the process. If you, it, you have to think something before you say it. Exactly. Very good. Now, you keep saying something. You keep saying the same thing again and again until it registers in your spirit. That's you. You are a spirit. You have a mind. But if it registers in your spirit, then it will begin to control your life. And I just saw how it controls it. The spirit then takes the mind and commands it to produce it. Exactly. The and fruit. it will produce it. It will, it produce. will grow it. Exactly. You've got it. That's exactly you, you what's get happening. This, you, you, you get the concept of this when Jesus said, the sower sows the word. Mm -hmm. These are they mm -hmm. by the wayside mm -hmm. where the word is sown. So... Uh, and he compared it to uh, sowing plants. He compared it, and so, well, he compared it to the earth. He did. He com what, what is the kingdom of God compared to, he said? It is compared to a man mm -hmm. who puts a seed into the ground. Mm -hmm. He goes to bed night and day, rises up. The seed grows. He doesn't know how. Mm -hmm. But the, when the seed produces harvest, he puts in the sickle and harvests it. So <laughs> the earth, the ground, God created the ground to grow. That's what it does. And, and it it has it in itself to grow. Exactly. You put something in the ground, it tries to grow it. Mm -hmm. That's the reason if, if you put a wooden fence post in the ground and you don't do something to treat that wood, the ground will do its best yes. to try to grow that. Yes. And so it does what it does. It breaks down the husk of the seed to allow it to grow, so it'll rot the bottom of that post. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ground will grow anything that you stick in there. Yes. It'll try its best to grow it. That's mm -hmm. what it does. Mm -hmm. Now, he compared their spirit to that. That's learning. And I just, it just flashed through me. Yeah. I, you, you, you just keep saying that, and you just keep saying that, you just mm -hmm. keep saying that, and it finally registers on your spirit, and your spirit says, all right, we have to grow that. We have to bring that to pass. Mm -hmm. That has to happen. Yeah, yeah. Because that's our assignment. Yes. Yes. And so it immediately, immediately transacts with the mind to bring this thing to pass. You're going to say it more now. You're going to say it more. You're going to do things to, uh, to advocate that. You're going you're to bring this thing to pass. And it may be a cancer. Exactly. And it may be wealth. Yes. It, it may be healing. Yes. Depends on where you get your information. You create your next reality. If you renew your mind to this, you bring this to pass. Exactly. Whoa. 
I'm going to preach on that. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I may, um, at this time, or in the next episode, the next broadcast, I wanted to sh bring up a slide of my theory, the research, which is exactly what you've just described, but it's all scientific language, only to show people, not to go through all the science, but to show people that there is a blend between science and spirituality, and that science, I, I spent my 30 years trying to understand this principle of when you think and feel and choose, you grow. You grow. You are putting that whole analogy. You've just there's a practical side to that. So whatever you think about the most is growing. Yes. Whatever you're focusing on, and in quantum physics, they actually have a term called quantum, the quantum Zeno effect, the QZE, and that's the repeated effort that makes learning take place. So memory is also part of what I've researched, and the quantum Zeno effect. What does it mean to have a repeated effort? What does it mean learning's taking place? What does it mean you plant the seed and it grows? So the whole science behind that, if you look at an image of my theory now, they can just bring it up and show. But essentially, I show that the, the whole spirit mind body connection and the response in the brain and if you as you're using your mind you are actually creating this physical change you literally like that fence post is growing the ground will grow it you literally are growing with every thought that you think so whether you like it or not you are creating matter out of mind you don't treat that wooden pole you growing something so you are always growing when you think you have grown a thought that has life forever Every thought that you grow has life forever. So when it's a toxic thought, we obviously don't want evil and toxicity to constantly exist. So it has to be reconceptualized, hence acknowledgement, repentance, redesigning, etc. So we know once I was like that, now I'm like that. Thank so you transform. We have yes. to have to have been introduced to Jesus, to know him, and now his blood effect is affecting the past. Oh, glory we to can, God. We can actually, when you've just said something so quantum physics-y that you didn't even realize it, how the blood affects the past, there's a principle called retroactive causation, and all that means is the blood affects the past. It's retroactive it's causation, causation. And it's like retro prayer. It's literally seeing that in eternity, the present, the past, and the future coexist. And that as you're praying, as you step, and you're really praying, connecting with the Spirit of God, you're stepping into eternity. So you're actually transforming how the future plays out in the present and how the past is going to play out into the future. That's quite a lot to get your head around, but that's what eternity is actually doing. That's what prayer, genuine prayer is doing. It's not begging God for something that already exists. It is accessing the ingredients of what does exist in potential form and transforming them into reality by the words that you speak, which is based on the thoughts that you are thinking, which is based on the power of the mind of Christ. Why well, as you apply 1 John 1, 9 to that, that he is faithful and just, righteous, mm -hmm. to forgive us our sins and to cleanse. when we confess them. Exactly. So we're, tr we're, we're trusting him with the sins of the past. Exactly. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I learned mm -hmm. years ago, years ago, long, long time ago, that... I cannot afford my feelings. I can't afford to be led Toxic by them. Feelings. Toxic yeah. Yeah. I, I can't be afford to be led by that. Mm -hmm. I have to be led by this, mm -hmm. which eventually changes my feelings. The toxic, yeah. Yeah, it, it, but it, 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 the moment I believe I receive that forgiveness because he's faithful and just, not because I feel better about it, but because he's faithful and just, mm -hmm. what does that do? changes my thoughts, I begin to change my words, and as I change my words, faith is released. Whoa. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the, 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 the toxic part of that is just neutralized and totally. just and, and that out. happens scientifically. When you're doing what you've just described, you've taken this toxic thought. Now, we've got all these trillions of thoughts that we've been building memories from conception. 
um, so we've got all these thoughts that are in our unconscious, and there's so many, we can't think of them all at any one time. So they get stimulated by the, the events of life. So every, like now I'm talking, you've got all kinds of thoughts coming up in your heads, which is your existing memories. And you use that to understand what I'm saying or to process what I'm saying from your unique perception. So as soon as something moves from the non-conscious to the conscious and you become aware of it, it becomes malleable, which means changeable. So as you now get a revelation of the spirit or whatever word you use, which is Christian language, what's happening scientifically is that, now let me take a good one. Here comes the scripture that you've so said a million times. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you've added a new branch on because it's a new level of meaning. And I have this overwhelming insights. thought of we're out of time. Oh gosh. <laughs> out of time. Can we not go beyond we're time? Just starting to grow. I know. <laughs> That's not fair. Praise God. <laughs> we'll grow again tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Information is more available and accessible than ever. Yet many find themselves feeling alone overwhelmed by the constant bombardment from social media and the chaos of their day. In her latest book, Think, Learn, Succeed, Dr. Caroline Leaf teaches you to better understand and use your mind to build a life that is filled with significance. With over three decades of experience in communication pathology, Dr. Leaf has created three practical tools to assist you in your journey towards success in life. The Mindset Guide identifies 15 mindsets and gives you insight into the powerful part they play in shaping how you see the world. The gift profile will reveal the unique way you process information by helping you understand how you think. And the five-step learning process will switch on your brain so that it can grow and build useful memories, leading to improved work performance and stronger relationships. Renew your mind daily with the Word and shift your life from survival mode to success in God. Order Dr. Caroline Leaf's book, Think, Learn, Succeed, at a special price of $16.99 on our website, kcm.org slash TV special, or call 800-600-7395. Shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. You can improve your memory and increase your learning. As you optimize your thought life, you'll unlock your hidden potential to live a meaningful, well-lived life. Think, Learn, Succeed. This is Dr. Caroline Leaf's brand new book. And in this book, she shares with us the science behind the way our minds work. Because your mind determines your identity by sending either a message of hope or discouragement to your soul. And that's why it's so crucial that you and I learn these two things. Number one, who we are in Jesus. And number two, who Jesus is in us. And there is so much good information and revelation in this book. You need to order your copy today. Just go to kcm.org and find out how. Now, next month, Brother Copeland is going to be at Eagle Mountain International Church right here on the grounds of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, February 28th through March 2nd. That's here in Fort Worth, Texas. He's going to be recording live Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. And we invite you to join us. Come be a part of the live studio audience for three nights of teaching. Just get totally immersed in the Word of God, and I promise you this, it will stir your faith. So for more information, go to kcm.org. Now, tomorrow on the broadcast, you're going to learn from Brother and Sister Copeland and from Dr. Caroline Leaf how your identity in Christ brings purpose and hope to your life. You don't want to miss these broadcasts. And if you missed anything leading up to this week of broadcast, I invite you to go to kcm.org. You can stream all the past broadcasts. They're there for you totally free. Get caught up. And even if you heard those before, you need to hear them again. There's life-changing truth in these messages. Thanks for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Until then, remember this. God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast is made available to you free by the partners and friends of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Go to kcm.org and request your free copy on DVD, CD, or as a digital download. Shipping charges may apply. At kcm.org, you can also access many free word-based resources to help you build your faith. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Keep your faith strong with the Word of God and step into a year of abundant harvest.
station for smooth hits from the 80s, 90s, and today. 104.1 WDLT. Word of Life Learning Institute is more than just a daycare. We specialize in the overall development of your child. We utilize an accelerated Christian education curriculum that teaches your children the basics they need for a strong academic future. We provide nursery through K-5 after school care and before and after school transportation. For more information, call 251-456-2650. Word of Life Learning Institute for learning and caring. This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. The root of all love and all goodness, the root of it, is belief. My goodness. It's belief in the promises of God. It's belief in Jesus Christ. It's believing on Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe on Him. Faith which worketh by love, my believing is now the root to the love and all the goodness. And you know that's the truth. In other words, you know, what you don't believe, you're not going to experience. Hi, Toya X. Nish is here, director of the Radical Women's Ministry. Are you ready for the 2019 Unfiltered Women's Conference? This conference will help you remove the mask and be exactly who God called you to be. You will also get first-hand advice from Rashida of Love & Hip Hop and Crystal Lee in an informative business session designed to help you succeed. Tickets are selling out fast. To purchase yours, visit taffydollar.org or the number listed on the screen. If you have your Bibles tonight, join me in the book of St. John, chapter 16 and verse 8. St. John, chapter 16 and verse 8. We want to talk about the root cause for all sin. The root cause for all sin. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So the Holy Spirit is going to convict of sin, but it doesn't mean convicting people of things they do that are wrong. Now, that's the first thing you think about. Well, the Holy Spirit's going to come and reprove the world of sin. And the first thing I know I used to think about was he's going to come and convict you for the things that you do, the wrong things that you do. Okay. Uh, so, you know, and how many of you ever thought the same thing? I mean, Holy Spirit's going to convict you of, of doing wrong. And so I was literally told uh, that when the Holy Spirit convicted me when I did wrong, that was good. At least you know you had the Holy Ghost. But that is not right. It's not right at all. I'm going to show you that the Holy Spirit doesn't come to convict you of doing wrong, but he comes to convict you of believing wrong. He comes to convict you of not believing. That's the issue here. Look at verse 9. He says in verse 9, he says, uh, of sin because they believe not on me. Now, that's the whole deal. Of sin because they believe not on me. Now, the thing I want you to see again is that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, is not sent to convict you of doing wrong. He was sent to convict you of not believing. He wants to convince you of not believing. Now, I know. 
I know your religious insides are just screaming loud because all we've ever learned in church is, you know, the Spirit of God came to deal with us for our wrongdoing. No, the Spirit of God came to deal with us because our not believing on Him. Jesus said He was sent to convince you or to convict you or to reprove, reprove you of not believing on Him. Now, what does it mean to believe on Him? To believe on Jesus is to believe that he, that, he was, that he lived and that he died and that he has forgiven you of all of your sins. That's, that's you know, and you believe in his finished works. That's believing on Jesus. Now, now the thing, the reason why this is so hard to swallow for some Christians is because I am saying to you, he didn't come to convict you of your wrongdoing. He came to convict you of not believing on him. Well, the scripture says he came to convict you of sin. Well, and then you say, well, sin is wrongdoing. Hold on a minute. It ultimately is. But listen to me. I'm going to say this. this. This came out of my mouth this past weekend in New York, and it's just, I still hadn't gotten a hold of it. Wrong, every action of sin is a reaction of unbelief. Think with me now. Every action of sin, every action of sin is a reaction of unbelief. In other words, unbelief is the root cause for every action of sin. Unbelief is. Unbelief. See, one, one, this one area of unbelief is responsible for every area of sinning. The one area of unbelief. It's almost uh, probably safe to say that unbelief is the root cause for all sin. Now, the reason why we struggle with this issue of sin versus unbelief is this. We've never clearly studied in the Scripture that unbelief is sin. Unbelief is sin. It is not only sin, unbelief all by itself is responsible for every action of sin. In fact, your sinning is a reaction of your not believing. So everything, every time you find your, I don't care what the sin is, the root cause of it is unbelief. So what you're doing is just reacting to <coughs> unbelief. It, it's almost like your sinning is a fruit that derived from unbelief. So, yeah, you hear me right. So if you can fix your unbelief problem, <coughs> then you're, you're not going to be reacting anymore to unbelief. But every time you react, See, you may not consciously see it as a reaction, but every time you react in sin, it's because you're reacting from that unbelief. So, every sin action, every action of sin is a reaction of unbelief. So, unbelief is the root cause. It is the cause of all of the... I mean, you, you name it, jealousy, stealing, killing, adultery. It is the root cause of the sin behavior. It's unbelief. And we have been so focused in on the reaction that we have not zeroed in on the root of that reaction. We've been focused in on the behavior that we have not focused in on the cause of that behavior, and that is unbelief. So I submit to you now that unbelief is sin. Unbelief is the sin that is the foundational cause of every sin. 
Now, I done, I done sat there at the these five different, different persons. Well, you have to get one of them. <laughs> Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit came, the Bible says, because they believed not on me. That's called unbelief. Unbelief is sin. Say that. Unbelief is sin. Now, uh, let's give a couple of illustrations. Uh, so the Holy Spirit is not going to come and convict you of uh, your, your lack of giving, your lack of tithing. No, you got to go to the root of it. What's the root of a lack of giving? It's a lack of trusting. <laughs> it's a lack of trusting and believing. I can use, I'm going to use those as synonymous terms tonight. Trusting and believing. You see, when you don't trust God where your finances are concerned, then the reaction to not trusting God with your finances will be not giving, not tithing, because the root of or the root cause of not giving and not tithing is not trusting and believing on what Jesus has promised where that is concerned. The, the amazing thing is that now we're getting ready to go look at some scripture, and all of a sudden, just by you understanding this, I mean, think about it. The next time you are tempted to sin, pause and say, there's an area of, uh, of unbelief that I'm dealing with here. Oh, I'm going to steal something. I don't believe he can provide for me. Amen. Oh, I'm going to go work so I can be righteous. I don't believe he's been... I don't believe that he's the righteousness of God for me. Every area, every area. I'm going to go commit adultery. I don't believe that what he promised me about marriage can come to pass in my life. In every area where there's a temptation, the ultimate place uh, is this place of unbelief. Now, we, we showed you this. It wouldn't be bad to show it to you again. Uh, in Matthew chapter 3, 16, moving into Matthew chapter 4 and 1, one of the issues here, you look at, you look at Jesus uh, going, being led by the Spirit to be tempted of the devil. Now, the temptation is not going to be legitimate unless he can get him to walk in unbelief. Okay? You can see this, Jesus in verse 16, Matthew 3, 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. He saw the Spirit of God describing, uh, descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And to a lower voice from heaven saying, now this is the thing. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now I want to pause right there. Imagine the things you'll be tempted to do if you don't believe what he just said about you. This is my beloved son. Imagine what life is going to be like now if you walk out of that place saying, wondering if you're really his beloved son. Imagine the destruction that, of the life of Jesus that would have occurred if he walked out of that wilderness that day doubting whether or not he was who God just said he was. All right? All right. So uh, he goes on here, next, and going to the next chapter. And, and notice in the next chapter, Matthew 4 and 1, then was Jesus led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now this temptation now is... Watch this. He was led into the wilderness to see if he believed what he just got. You're going to believe it or you're going to not believe it. Everything's going to start right here. Look at the next verse. Uh, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards and hungered. Verse 3, this is pretty awesome. And when, he, when the tempter came, that's the devil, to, to him, he said, now watch this, if thou be the Son of God. Wait, do you see that? Do you see that? All right, so think about it. If he didn't believe he was the Son of God, now watch what he asked it to do. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Question, if he didn't believe he was the Son of God, how would he have responded here? He would have turned the stone into bread. Which thus would, which would, and what, what would he have been indicating by turning the stone into bread? Now, if he, could not have to, if he could not have turned the stone into bread, 
it would not be a legitimate temptation. But for a lot of years, people have thought the temptation was, oh, he was tempted to turn the stone into bread. Now, let me show you what temptation really is. It's pressure applied to your flesh to get you to contradict a promise that you said you believed. That is as accurate as, I, as, I, as I've ever known. It's pressure applied to your flesh or your mental capacity to try to get you to contradict what you believe. Now, so here's the deal with Jesus in the garden, in the, in the uh, wilderness this day. The deal was, what was the temptation? The temptation was not turning the stone into bread. The temptation was not believing what he said when he said, thou art the son, you, you're my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That was the temptation. For him to turn that stone into bread, he would have been saying, I don't believe that I am the Son of God. And now he's trying to prove something to try to, you know, because he don't believe he's the Son of God. So that, that was, it, 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 if you start looking, it, it's all over, it's, it's all over the Scripture. It's, it's, the, it's the answer to a lot of things that have, have kind of confused us over the years uh, where this is concerned. Look at, um, look at, um, oh... Let's go to Hebrews. I don't want to go to Hebrews. Yeah, let's go to Hebrews 4.15. Hebrews 4.15. I'm, I'm telling you, even if, even if you deal with the temptation in your mind and the tempter comes in your mind and you find yourself uh, hungry for doing something you know you're not supposed to do, pause and say, let me locate the area of unbelief. By doing that, that's going to cause that thing to just, wait a minute, they, they know something. This is humongous. All right? For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities or the weaknesses of our flesh, but was in all points he was tempted like as we are, yet without sin. All right? I used to think, well, just look at my sin reactions, you know, smoking and cussing and whatever I did. Jesus right here must have did the same thing. Well, I can kind of prove to you it's probably he didn't do some of the same thing. He probably didn't have access to some of the same type of stuff we have. So if it wasn't that, then what was it, you know, in like manner that he was tempted? It's the root, the root, the same root, tempted to walk in unbelief, tempted, tempted. He could have, in other words, it, it, it wasn't very, it wasn't pressure. He could have. He could have made a decision to walk in unbelief. He was, you know, but was in all points tempted. Like we just saw at one point where he was tempted. The, the tempter showed up to try to get him to what? Not believe. The Bible, this is so awesome. Jesus meditated in the Word day and night and became who he, who, what, what he was meditating on. And if he meditated in the Word day and night, how many you know you and I got to meditate in the Word day and night and become what we meditate on? All right? He was tempted in all points. What point? He was tempted, you know, to, to walk in unbelief. The enemy, all, listen, it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. Look at the first thing, he, the, the same thing there, just tempting them to walk in unbelief. Hath God said. The whole thing, see, we've been looking at the, Behavior stuff that they did, you know, you, you know, what you do wrong, but you're not understanding that your wrongdoing is a reaction of your unbelief. You know, you learn how to deal with unbelief, you can deal with all of that stuff. My God, my God. My God, my God. Amen? Amen. And so he was tempted just like you're. So if he was tempted, and you just saw that in the wilderness, if he was tempted to walk in unbelief, Dude, come on. You, listen. But you just, if you zero in on it, I now know the area of attack. Unbelief. All right, so what's the reason why you, I come in here and preach on healing? You go outside and start coughing and fall out. It's a temptation not to believe. You know what fear is? You know what fear, the ultimate definition of fear is? Fear is not believing that what he promised will come to pass. That's ultimate fear, not believing that what he promised is come to pass. And what do you call not believing 
what he promised will come to pass. What do you call that? You call it unbelief. You call it unbelief. That is the, that is the, it is almost like we have gotten to the very guts of the devil and we can, we can now issue some serious damage. So every area, you wake up every day of your life, you got to settle what you believe. And what you believe is Jesus. You believe on Jesus. Say, I believe on Jesus. I believe on Jesus. And the Holy Spirit has been sent to convince you, go on and believe on Jesus. You know, I was, um, uh, it, it, maybe it was sometime last week, I was, uh, I was uh, upstairs meditating on some scriptures for the weekend. And, um, and, and, I, and I was making some confessions. I have these confessions that I make over you and over my family and over the, our finances and everything. And I got to this scripture where it says, and there is no lack. And the Spirit of God says, you've not yet understood this. I said, well, yeah, praise the Lord. He said, I believe that there is no lack. And he says, that's good, but here's what, I, here's what I'm saying to you. There is no lack. And I said, well, I just said that. He says, no, no, you said, I believe there's no lack. I'm, I'm trying to show you, well, then, there is no lack. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Hey, see, 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 you're trying to talk yourself into mm. believing that there's no lack. He said, but there's no way that lack can exist if you believe on me. And even if it's there, and I said, well, 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 you know, there's some lack. He says, you see what your, your temptation is? You're now being tempted based on what you can see versus what you say you believe. And when you say you believe something, it now governs how you see and what you say. Your mouth will start speaking stuff born out of unbelief. Or your mouth can start speaking things born out of what you believe. But if you believe on Jesus Christ, you can settle the issue of lack. There is no lack. Why? Can't be. Why? Because I believe in the provisions of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I, I said, oh, oh, and I got up from that place and I said, there is no lack. There is no lack. And the only thing, and even if you have it physically manifested in your life, even if you have it, that belief is going to change it. The, the, the only reason the lack showed up was to tempt you to not believe. God, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. The only reason anything happens in your life Glory. is to tempt you to resign from your belief and to present unbelief, which is the sin that he can build upon and create all kinds, allow all kinds of things to happen in your life. Somebody shout, I believe. I believe. See, this is why it says, only believe. All things are possible if you'll believe on him. Man, that, that's, seriously, I could just say, okay, go home and just do just what I just said and your entire life will change. It's like demons are trembling. You, you know, when you, when you pull the blinds down over people's like eyes for so long and they just don't even, they don't even have no clue. I mean, think about it before you understood grace versus the law and how you were walking around trying to, through your self-effort, get God to do something and look at the peace and the rest that your life is in right now and how the Holy Spirit's changed you on the inside. And you, can, you can't ever, be, you know, I, I, can't, I can't believe that I actually used to believe that as a man, it was my job to dominate my household, dominate my wife, control everybody. And there was, I used scripture for it. That's what I was taught. You know, a man ought to control his wife and control his household. And if you don't, then you're worse than an infidel. And and I, I just, you know, and, and I sit back and, and I think, I can't even believe I thought like that. I can't even believe I thought like that. And religion yep, yep. is, an, is an, it, I believe, is, is, a, is a top tool that the enemy uses to keep you in unbelief. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, uh... Let, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me attempt to go after something here. Uh, Romans 14 and 23. 
Let me, let me attempt to, 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 to do something here. Oh, boy. Pray for me now. I ain't never been down this path before, so pray for me. The context of Romans 14 is very interesting. It's a chapter that was talking about whether a guy ought to eat meat or not. And it was really talking about, you know, if a guy really believes that he shouldn't eat it, then the brother shouldn't make him eat it. And, and, and it, it just really runs down the line here. But verse 23, it, it comes to this point. He says, and he that doubteth is damned. You know, when something is damned, it stops anything from getting through, right? That's why the last thing you want to do is damn God. You see what I'm saying? Watch your mouth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat. Now, the issue is not what he's eating. The issue is he's doubting. Because he eateth not of faith. Watch this. For whatsoever is not of faith is what? Are the promises of Christ for women the same as they are for a man? Is the power of God measured by the sex of the voice that announces it? Can the male eyes see the needs of human suffering better than the female eyes? Should her feet not go with the gospel as much as his should? Contact us now for Creflo and Taffy Dollar's Faith and Equality Combo. The messages truly depict God's plan for us to have success in our relationships and empowerment through gender roles. God has something magnificent he's going to use you for. He has an anointing on your life. The Faith and Equality Combo comes complete with Taffy Dollar's three CD message series, Equal in God's Eyes, Creflo Dollar's four CD message series, Resilient Faith, and the five CD message series, Avoiding Powerless Unbelief Special Edition. Today's offer is available for a love gift of $60 or more. The 2019 Change Experience is headed your way. Join Pastors Creflo and Taffy Dollar for one day only. There will be three Power Pack sessions, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. God can use you in a lot of places where you think you don't need a pulpit. You don't need people that's dressed up in nice clothes. Just be aware of where you are. Your best days ahead. You are moving forward. You are advancing, you are elevating, you are upgraded, and God is taking you to a place that is beyond your wildest dreams. January 25th in Tampa, Florida. February 8th in St. Louis, Missouri. February 22nd, Kingston, Jamaica. Call, text, or go online to register today. See you there. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Your generosity allows us to make a difference in the lives of people all over the world. Through Creflo Dollar Global Missions, we are providing food, clothing, crucial supplies, and the Word of God to people in the most remote regions of the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Life Television Network, Chickasaw, Mobile, Pritchard. Hello, friend. I am Dr. Henry W. Roberts II, and I am the president of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries and also businessmen. But if you're out there and you're looking for a place where you can learn and glean a fellowship 
not somewhere where somebody's trying to lord over you or be your pastor, but you want to be in a, a part of something and your church is in an independent situation. And I know that there are a lot of us out there, but we're not independent, so to speak, but we're interdependent. And that's why we need fellowship. The Bible says where there's two, one can keep the other one warm. I want to come into unity and agreement with you. And I want you to consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Churches and Ministries. Man, I'm telling you, we have such great meetings. We have breakfasts every quarter. And in those breakfasts, we share things that help take our ministries to the next level. There are also times when we bring in special speakers. But most of the time, we're just networking and coming together and sharing a group of pastors and ministers and leaders from the community that are coming together to create change in the earth realm. If you need a place to call home, a place that's going to love you, give you instructions and impartations that will cause your ministry to grow and change and be all that you believe God has told you it could be, will become a part or consider becoming a part of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries. I'm so blessed to be the president and the founder of this organization. It was birthed because I started birthing sons, and we needed to be, be, have a place that we could convene around and just fellowship and glean from one another. The Bible says, iron sharpens is iron, so does the kindness of one friend to another. I may paraphrase that, but you know what I'm talking about. We need each other. Every joint supply. You may have a supply that I need. I may have a supply that you need. So an announcer is going to come and leave some information that you may know how to become a part of or find out when our next meeting is. I look forward to meeting you and greeting you in the name of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the International Fellowship of Independent Christian Churches and Ministries, God bless you and keep you is my prayer. To learn more about the International Fellowship of Independent Interdenominational Christian Churches and Ministries or to receive a membership packet, write to 351 South Craft Highway, Chickasaw, Alabama 36611. Or you can call area code 251-456-2652. Well, God bless you and welcome to the Kingdom Agenda. I'm your teacher for today, Keith Moore of Impact, Impact Christian Church, a Kingdom Agenda Fellowship. So we thank God for us being together, and we thank you for taking the time to be a part of what I believe is a vital teaching for this time and for this season. The Bible says, you know, that the sons of Issachar, they understood time and season, and they therefore had influence over the whole nation. And so we want you to understand today the prophetic time and season that we're in. So before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. And uh, if you will, just join me now in prayer. Father, we thank you now for this time, and we, we bless your name for being the wonderful God you are. We thank you for your son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We thank you, Lord God, for him giving his life and his blood for us, Father God, and saving us, that he, knowing that he died once and for all to abolish all of the old sacrificial system. So God, we thank you now, and we come to you in honor. We say, release us in this time of teaching to teach by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Have you ever wondered why you feel and experience certain things at certain times in your life? You know, many of us want to live on mountaintops all the time. We want to live this life of the high life continually. But I have to let you know, listen, that time and season happens to all of us. There are moments, there are times, there are seasons. There is an atmosphere in the kingdom that we have to learn how to prepare for and strive to be successful within. One of the things I always say uh, when, we, when we speak on atmosphere is that, listen, everyone is subject to air. <laughs> Everyone is subject to air. You, if, it's, if it's 75 degrees here um, in the state of Alabama, which is about 90 at this moment, but if it's 75 degrees in the state of Alabama, guess what? Everyone in this region, in this moment, in this space is experiencing 75 degrees. But when we learn to adjust to the temperature and we learn to adjust to the season, then we can make life more comfortable for us. You know, um, in time and season, I know this is the year 2018, 
But prophetically, on the Hebraic calendar, under Judaism, we've just come into a brand new year. It's the year 5779. So in the Jewish nation, among the Jewish people, we say, uh, Lashana Tova, Happy New Year. We, we pray you have a blessed new year. Now, let me point out to you that this is one of two heads of the year um, that are the major heads of the year for the Jewish nation. Uh, one being the month of Tishrei, which is the first month on the ecclesiastical calendar, uh, on the civil calendar, and the seventh month on the ecclesiastical calendar. And then in the book of Exodus, God resets it and says that the first month will be the month of Abib or Nisan. So there's actually two new years um, um, understood in Jewish tradition. Actually, about four, but two major ones, the civil and the ecclesiastical. So um, just, just yesterday, um, after Yom Kippur, and we'll talk a little bit about those high holy days, but just yesterday, we celebrated Yom Kippur, uh, the Day of Atonement, the day that the priest would go into the temple and make a sacrifice uh, once a year for a temporary, a temporary pardoning or atonement for sin for himself and for the people. But, but how many of us know that the writer of Hebrews, he, in Hebrews 9, watch this, that, that Jesus went, Christ went, and he made atonement once and for all. So he paid for all of the sin nature and every sin that could be committed with one act of selfless sacrifice. When he took off his glory and he became as a man and he went to Calvary and died for us. Thank God for the blood of Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. But I want to talk about this prophetic season as we, as we look at this new Hebrew year of 5779. Now, again, we're standing in 2018, but simultaneously we're standing in 5779. When we talk about 5779, we are counting from a different point of origin. The Hebrew nation counts from the origin of Adam, from the creation of Adam. That is where they trace their, their, their point of embarkation from. We, of course, deal with Jesus the Christ. So it's 2018 um, and from, a, from a Gentile or a Gregorian perspective, but from a Hebrew perspective, it's 5779. Now, within the Hebraic teaching, within the Hebraic mindset, there, there are certain things that affect the way we view each year. From a prophetic perspective, and it's not always embraced by, by Judaism um, very closely, but from the prophetic perspective, we're standing in a year called A-N Tet. That's A-Y-I-N-T-E-T. A-N Tet. What is A-N Tet about? It's the 79 of the 5779. It's the last two digits. So what we want to deal with is this 10-year this period of A-N and then this ninth year of Tet in the Hebraic mindset. Now, one of the things I want to tell you is background, and we're going to come to some scripture in just a moment, is that in, in, the, in, the, um, in the Hebraic alphabet, each alphabet has a, 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 a picture that goes along with each alphabet and each number. Each of them represent are represented by a pictogram, not just by uh, the stroke of a letter or a Hebraic letter, but also by what we call a pictogram. So a pictogram is, is, is um, representative of each letter within the alphabet and numeral, num, uh, numerical system that is contained in Hebraic teaching. Stay with me. So this year, Seven, uh, 5779, dealing with the 79, is represented by two symbols. The decade, the 70, is represented by an I, uh, an I, the E-Y-E. And what the I represents is revelation. It represents understanding. The nine, or the ninth digit, which actually is a, is a number of finality and conclusion because once you finish with nine, you roll over into a whole nother decade. So now we're in 79, about to roll over to 80, and we're going to move into a totally different temperament than we are now within the kingdom, prophetically and spiritually. So the nine represents an, is a number of finality, which we'll talk about in a few more moments. It's a number of finality. So we're closing out one through nine. And the number nine is represented, watch this, by a serpent. The number nine is represented by a serpent. 
So what we have in understanding and interpreting this prophetic season over this next year, basically from September to September of next year, we, in, in, in the prophetic um, Hebraic paradigm, is we're looking at a year where revelation and, 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 and the snake, the serpent, the wisdom, the subtlety are going to be the overriding bedrock of this year. So let's talk about this for a moment. I want to turn your attention to two passages of scripture, two verses that I want to look at today in our discussion. Um, Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 11. Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 11. And then we're also going to look at Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 16. We're going to look at Matthew, the 13th chapter, verse 11, and then we're going to look at Matthew, the, six, the 10th chapter, um, um, and verse 16. So, the writer of Matthews in Matthew 13, um, as we know, is written by uh, who else but Matthew. <laughs> but Matthew begins uh, Matthew 13 with a parable. And it's a parable where Jesus is talking about a man who went out to sow seed. He went out to sow seed, which we know parabolically um, represents the word of God. Now, when we talk about parables, parables use a principle called juxtaposition. When you juxtaposition a thing, you put two things side by side with a dividing line down the middle, and you make comparative inferences between the two things. In other words, if I say, for instance, as an example, John 15, where Jesus says that I'm the vine and ye are the branches. He says, my father is the husbandman. And he says, abide in me as I abide in you, as you can, and you can bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can bear nothing. So he uses the picture of a vine to show us spiritual connection and spiritual fruitfulness. So, so he shows us how the vine functions on one side, which in that time and in that context, the main um, 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 beverage of the day was water or wine. So everyone understood what vineyards were all about. So he takes us to the picture of the vineyard to show us the spiritual relationship between the believer through Jesus Christ to the Father. So, so we call this juxtaposition or parabolic teaching. In Matthew 13, we find Jesus speaking of, speaking of the kingdom on this wise. The same day, the Bible says, he went out of the house and sat by the seaside. And the great multitude were gathered together with him so that they went into a ship and sat the whole multitude and stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, in parabolic teachings, in wise teachings that juxtapose things, they put things side by side to teach us a message. So he, so he goes out and he's now on the ship, they're on the shore, and he begins to talk to them in a parable. Watch this, he says, behold a sower, behold a sower went to sow, and when he sowed some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon the stony place where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was upon them, they were scorched. Listen, the Bible says they were scorched. Hallelujah. They were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground. Hallelujah. Fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. He who had ears to hear, let him hear. Now watch this. And then the disciples came unto him um, and said, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Now, here's, here's where we want to go in the context of this discussion. He says, he answered and said unto them, because, because it is given to you, watch this, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. It is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. He, he, Jesus says to them, I want you to know the mysterion. I want you to understand the hidden things. I want you to receive revelation on the kingdom so that you can know what the Father is doing in the earth. How will we ever manifest thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven if we never get to understand what God wants out of heaven. Herein is the 70 that I represented. Revelation, God wants you to understand what's happening in the kingdom. So he wants to release revelation. He says it's given to us. It was given to us before the foundation of the world. It is a gift to you to understand what God is doing within each time and within each season. So listen, he does not want the believer, the kingdom dweller, to walk around in spiritual blindness. So Matthew 13 records this for us. And we begin to understand that God wants us to understand what's happening in the kingdom. Now, I mentioned to you earlier that we also want to look at Matthew, um, Matthew 10. We want to look at Matthew 10. And we want to drop down to about verse, uh, the context about probably about 14 to 16. And we want, to, we want you to understand this particular verse. Now, we're building our case for A.N. Tet. A.N. Tet. He wants us to understand. He wants us to know the revelation because watch this. He's got us on a mandate and a mission. He's got us on a mandate and a mission. And in this year, as we close out this century, as we close out this century, we are going to move the kingdom like never before. Here's the crux of it. Matthew 10, verse 5 through 15. Let's read this context and we're going we're gonna to get you to understanding what's going to happen for you in this year. Listen, verse 5 begins, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded, this is an apostolic ministry. He says, these 12 he sent forth and he commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into, the, into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach saying, watch this, the kingdom of heaven is is at hand. Now remember Matthew 13 says, I want you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, the mysterion of the rule and reign of heaven in the earth. Matthew 10 says, watch this, that I want you to go forth and here's what you're supposed to be preaching. You should be preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom is here, but do you see it? Can I challenge you with that question right now in our discussion? The kingdom is here, but can you see what's happening from heaven to earth? Open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes, A-N. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. He says, I'm freely giving you the revelation of the kingdom. Now you freely give the revelation of the kingdom to the world around you. Hallelujah. Watch this. He said, provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither coats, neither shoes, neither, nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. He says, the gospel is going to feed you. You're worthy of it. Watch this. And in whatsoever city that you shall enter, inquire not, inquire who, who in it is worthy, and thereby till ye go thence. And when you are coming to a house, salute it. And if that house be worthy, let your peace, your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. So he gave the disciples the ability, the strength, the spiritual uh, capacity to impart peace to a home. He says, if you come into a house and they won't receive the kingdom, don't leave peace there. Let them stay in turmoil until they become kingdom people. But he says, if they will receive the message of the kingdom, and he's talking out of Judah to, to him, them going to the lost sheep of Israel, going to the Jews. He says, listen, if they'll receive this peace, this gospel of peace, this king of kings and lord of lords, then you pronounce peace upon them. Now watch this. Verse 14 says, um, and, and, and whosoever shall not receive you, he says, listen, I want you to shake the dust off of your feet. Shake the dust off your feet. He says, take no remnant of that place with you. He says, shake it off of your feet. And he says, I want you to keep it moving. He says, and this is what you got to understand. It's going to be hard on them in the last days. It's going to be hard on them in the last days. And he says, listen, I want you to understand, listen, you're going forth on my mission and I'm sending you forth. I'm giving you power to do certain things. And I want you to go forth with my mission. Now watch what he says here in verse 16. He says, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore, watch this, wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. 
He says, I want you wise as a serpent, but I also want you as harmless of a, as a dove. Now, uh, he says to the believer, to the disciples who are going forth on this apostolic journey, I need you to have this attribute from a snake. A-N, Tet, Revelation, and, 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 and the snake himself, the subtlety of the snake. Now watch this. In, in, in biblical context, the serpent represents several things. Um, it not only represents evil. A lot of times we only think that the serpent represents evil, but it represents much more than that. And we're going to talk about that in this broadcast and maybe a couple more down the road. We're going to talk about what he really represents. But one of the things that he represents, watch this, is not only evil, but he also represents wisdom. Notice the context. He says, I want you to be as wise. I want you to be as wise as Big Mama's wise sayings. No. I want you to be as wise as your pastor. No, that's not what he says. He says, I want you to be as wise, as intelligent, as, in, as prudent, as mindful as a snake would be. I want you to be as wise as a serpent and yet be as harmless as a dove. So he gives us this positive attribute of, of, of an animal a, a, a creature that most of us have disdain for. Most of us don't like snakes. We don't like serpents. They've always, we, we've always been taught, kill the snake, kill the snake. But, but Jesus says in context, there's something that this serpent has that I want you to get from him. And I want you to get his wisdom. And so we have to understand, watch this, that in this prophetic season, in this next year of 5779, that God is going to open your eyes, watch this, to the revelation of the snake. He's going to help you see in, the next, in this next year, watch this, all of the enemy's plans, because that's one aspect of the serpent. He'll help you to see evil. He's not going to let you get caught up in diabolical plans. He's not going to let you be taken care of, but he's going to give you a wisdom. Here's the positive attribute, the good and the evil of this serpent. He says, I'm going to give you prudence. I'm going to give you intelligence and I'm going to give you wisdom to see the enemy's plans and to have a strategic plan on how we're going to conquer him. Hallelujah. A-N Tet, I'm opening your eyes, your spiritual understanding, so that you can see the enemy's plans in your life. As a result, as a result, you have to consider your heart. Notice he said in Matthew, uh, Matthew, thir Matthew, I'm sorry, Matthew 10, he says, I want you to be as wise as a serpent, but I want you to be as harmless as a dove. This word harmless here, watch this, means that you're pure. You don't have evil in you. You're free from guile. So watch this. Here's going to be the challenge for the believer in this next season. You're going to have to.